Legend has it that long ago, fanboys were united under one banner. But soon, the greedy and mischievous entity known as Hollywood began adapting and perverting the media that once held the world of fandom together. Thus, the fanboy split into four factions. The Sci-Fi Society, ever faithful to science fiction. The Dungeon Dwellers, devoted to magic and fantasy. The Comic Crusaders, admirers of the paneled pages. The Gamers Guild, pixelated warriors of the digital world. But legend also tells of a warrior who will belong to all four factions. A warrior who will one day unite them all as he punishes the films that have relentlessly sullied the media that we know and love. While he will be known by many names, ultimately, he will be known as the Blockbuster Buster. In a world of uncertainty, where movie theaters are plagued by remakes and sequels. In a world where big budget movies can still suck. In this world, we have the Blockbuster Buster. Fanboys and fangirls, I'm Erod and I'm the Blockbuster Buster. In 1999, writer director M. Night Shyamalan reinvigorated the suspense horror genre with his hit film, The Sixth Sense. But then something happened as his film slowly but surely became nothing more than watered down versions of his first few films. And eventually, Shyamalan became a parody of himself, causing audiences to collectively roll their eyes whenever they would see his name attached to a movie. And this is the guy that they chose to adapt one of the most successful cartoons today into a movie. <laughs> Dandy. Now I have to admit, the first time I ever watched the last Airbender cartoon was actually while I was getting ready for this review. And after checking out a couple of episodes, all I have to say is this show is FUCKING AWESOME! The animation is beautiful, the mythology is fascinating, and most of the characters are pretty cool. The show takes place in a fantasy world where there are four nations of people. Each can control one of the basic four elements. One of them, the Avatar, can control all four elements and maintains the peace, until the day he disappeared. The four nations become divided, and the Fire Nation declares itself superior and starts conquering the world. The Avatar returns reincarnated as a little boy named Aang, who is destined to stop the Fire Nation and save the world. Now I know I'll get a million emails if I fail to mention that the show's full title is Avatar The Last Airbender, but for the movie they shortened it to just The Last Airbender, you know, so they wouldn't be confused for that other movie. You know the one. In Abada. Yup, that's the one. Thanks Arnie. But I still can't help but wonder how that conversation went. Oh right, like you called dibs. Well, I am that dibs. Ah. Well, I'm calling double dibs. Ah, you've won this round with your superior dib calling. So just to recap, we have a director that has become a laughingstock in the genre that he's supposed to be proficient at, directing his first blockbuster movie in a genre that he has little to no experience in. What a twist! So our movie begins as a couple of siblings, Katara and Sokka, are out hunting in the frozen tundra. Katara is a waterbender, but she sucks at it. Sokka has the amazing power to be a nagging douchebag. Stop doing that stuff around me. I always get wet. The sibling's hunt is cut short when a giant ball of ice suddenly rises out of the ground. Hey, hey you know what this reminds me of? Those old sci-fi movies where something otherworldly shows up and some idiot pokes it with a stick? The giant ball of ice opens to reveal that it has a little boy inside and a giant furry... Tauntaun? Is anybody going to explain what that is? Trying to eat me. Ah, oh, fuck it, forget it. By looking at his tattoos, Katara quickly determines that Aang is an airbender and could potentially be the Avatar. In Abada. How'd you get all the way out here? I ran away from home. 
We got in a storm. We were forced under the water of the ocean. It wasn't very smart. Uh, hello, this is a uh, former kid actor, Miko Hughes. I'm not in right now, so uh, leave a message. Um, hello, uh, Miko Hughes. Uh, you don't know me. My name is Erod. I'm the Blockbuster Buster. I want to sincerely apologize to you as you are no longer the worst kid actor in the movies that I've reviewed. Unfortunately, the big explosion from breaking the ice ball got the attention of... The Fire Nation is here. What? And they brought their machines. Yeah, fuck progress, those idiots with their electricity and their refrigerated food. Pfft, lame. So the Fire Nation is led by Zuko. No, 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 not, not him. Talking about the ultra badass Fire Lord and in this movie he's played by Dev Patel from Slumdog Millionaire? Now, don't misunderstand me. Dev is a great actor, but Zuko's a bad motherfucker who doesn't take any prisoners. Dev always looks like he's about to cry. But you know what the real heartbreaker is about this situation? Dante Basco, the voiceover actor that plays Zuko in the cartoon, lobbied long and hard to play him in this movie and still didn't get it. And you do know who Dante Basco is, right? He's Rufio, motherfucker! Man, that would have been awesome. Well, with the Fire Nation on the scene, I guess our heroes have no choice but to make a hasty retreat. He's facing them? Wow, that means Aang's gonna use his amazing airbending skills too. I'll go with you. Man, I wonder how Sokka and Katara are gonna catch up to the Fire Nation to rescue Aang. The Tauntaun flies? Is anybody going to explain what the hell that is? Oh. Oh, okay. Here it is. Sky Bison. Fur-covered plot convenience often found in poorly written scripts to abridge equally badly written scenes. Huh. Aang escapes from the Fire Nation with little to no effort and is conveniently picked up at that very moment by his pals. Aang reveals that he was raised and trained in a monastery. But when they revealed to him that he was the Avatar, that he was destined to save the world, Aang, who just wanted to be a normal little boy, freaked out, ran away, and hid in that ball of ice. But when he returns to the monastery, he realizes he was actually in the ice for a hundred years. And in the intervening time, the Fire Nation hunted down and killed all the airbenders, out of fear that one of them would turn out to be the Avatar. In Abada. Ah! So you overslept for a hundred years? Dude, next time you're going into hibernation, set up an alarm clock like Omi. I mean, I'm sure you can get one from the Fire Nation and their machines. Pfft, stupid Fire Nation and their motor-powered canoes. Pfft, lame. Our heroes take a detour when they suddenly find a little boy being chased by the Fire Nation. That child is being arrested. For what? He dared to kill a king's dare. <laughs> Katara tries to stop them with her water bending, but comic relief is far more important. It's okay, Aang can use his air bending too. So our heroes are taken to a village of earthbenders. Earthbenders! You are powerful and amazing people. You don't need to live like this. Oh my god, Keanu Reeves was more dramatic infliction into his performances. There is no way that all that deadpan psycho babble is going to inspire the earthbenders to. Sing it! We will, we will rock you! We okay, two things. One, a group of professional soldiers just got their asses kicked by a bunch of farmers. And two, all Aang did to rally the troops was run his mouth in a dreary monotone and wave his arms around like he was directing traffic. That would never work. Nonetheless. Hello, YouTubers. I'm Erod and I'm the Blockbuster Buster. You should totally subscribe to my channel because it's really cool. So as it turns out, Aang never mastered bending the other elements and needs to find masters that can teach him to bend water, earth, and fire so he can be the true avatar. So the quest is on to find the masters that can teach Aang. We're near the Northern Air Temple. Do you think it would be okay if I just visited there and came back? Wait, 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 wait! Everybody on the planet is looking for you! Only a complete idiot would. 
So Aang is captured again, this time by another Fire Lord named Commander Yao. King of the Rock. All hope is lost when he is suddenly rescued by some guy in a mask. And on top of that, Yao lets them go. Why? Do not kill the Avatar! He will just be reborn again. So you've spent the last hundred years killing off all the airbenders just in case one of them turned out to be the Avatar, even though you knew that the Avatar is always reincarnated? I'm surrounded by idiots. Uh, nonetheless, I'm still curious to know who the guy in the mask is. Zuko? What a twist! And why did Zuko save Aang? Well, it turns out that Zuko was actually vanished from the Fire Nation by his father for some unforeseen indiscretion. And now Zuko seeks to regain entry into the Fire Nation by presenting Aang to his father. And how do I know all this? Cause in the previous scene, Zuko asked a random little boy to tell him his own backstory. It's your fucking backstory! Why would you need a stranger to tell it to you? You were fucking there! So our heroes make it to the domain of the waterbenders, where Aang learns to bend water, and Soka hooks up with the white-haired girl. Now, other reviewers might want to exaggerate and say that these two characters have no chemistry. I disagree. I happen to think they have the chemistry of a rock and a piece of paper. So Aang's training is going well until... Zuko goes to capture Aang, but Katara goes to defend him. This goes almost as well as you would expect. Finally, it comes down to Aang and Zuko for an elemental showdown that will... What? Why didn't you do that earlier? Damn you, Courtney Solomon! Scum! We can be friends, you know. You said that with so much conviction, I totally want to be your BFF. Commander Yao figures out that the way to take away the waterbender's powers is to put a fish in a bag and stab it. Really? How do you take away a firebender's powers? By throwing a poodle out the window? Oh man! But it's okay, the white-haired girl restores everyone's powers by getting into the water and dying. One! One dead body! Ah! 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 I'm back, bitches! So Aang finally gets his ass in gear and shows off the amazing martial arts prowess of... Billy Elliot? After seeing that Aang can bend water, the Fire Nation pretty much says, Fuck that noise. Oh yeah, and by the way, some random waterbenders killed Commander Yao. Two! Two dead bodies! Ah! 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 I love my job! So we cut to the leader of the Fire Nation who's having a discussion with a mystery accomplice about a magical comet that is going to fly by and amplify all the firebenders' powers. And when that happens, they will be able to defeat the Avatar. In Abadar. SHUT UP! And who is this mystery assailant that will take down the Avatar? Suko's sister? So your big reveal is that the new villain is a character that we only saw for three-eighths of a second during a flashback? What's a twist? No, that's not a twist. It's not even a surprise. We barely know this character. We don't know what she can do or if she's even a threat. You know what? Whatever. Let's go check out Aang and let's see how he masters earth and fire so he can save the- Are you kidding me? Were you that fucking confident that this shit fest was going to do well enough to warrant a sequel? That's it. increasingly irritating air bubble in the pit of your stomach. Now I'll admit it, this movie had one of the greatest teaser trailers I had ever seen in my life. Ong is practicing martial arts in a temple alone, when suddenly the camera pulls out to reveal that the whole Fire Nation army is headed towards that temple to fight Ong. So it's gonna be Ong versus the whole Fire Nation army. But guess what? That doesn't fucking happen in this movie! At all! But this movie's biggest flaw is Ang or Ong if you want to use the Chinese pronunciation. What makes the cartoon work is how Ong is very much a real little kid. He's clumsy and he's awkward, he loves to play and have fun, which makes him easy to relate to and easy to understand. Here, he's this flawless messiah who always knows just what to do and what to say. 
which honestly makes the audience feel alienated. And it also kills all dramatic tension as you have no doubt that he is always going to win. If you're really, really curious, I highly recommend you watch the cartoon first. However, if you're not a masochist, just avoid the movie altogether. So that was one busted, thousands more to go. I'm Erod, and I'm the Blockbuster Buster. Check out my website, suckers!